Welcome to The Late Show on Wednesday the 10th of April. Uh, my name is Tim Vince and I hope that you'll be able to email and text as we go through this show. Uh, we will be focusing on a phenomenon, uh, especially it's phenomenal for, for those of us who are you know, getting more advanced in years to see how the whole face of our nation, the nation of Britain, has changed in our lifetimes. Uh, and in one uh, particular regard, and, and that is uh, uh, immigration, uh, but not only immigration, but also the uh, absorption of, of religions which are completely alien to a, a Christian nation. And uh, uh, what is most interesting is, is a survey, an opinion poll, very thorough, comprehensive poll, has just been published by the Henry Jackson Society, uh, uh, discussing uh, British uh, uh, Muslim and general public attitudes uh, and comparing the two. And so this will be a large part of what I focus on because people are always saying, well, what's the evidence of this? What's the evidence of that? Uh, but it's very helpful sometimes to go, as it were, to the horse's mouth and hear you know, what the Muslim people in Britain actually believe uh, regarding uh, Hamas or the Palestinian conflict or um, demonstrating and intimidating MPs outside their homes or some of the conspiracy uh, uh, theories against the Jewish people and anti-Semitism. Uh, the good thing is it's not me saying this, it's actually uh, surveys uh, across all the age ranges of the British Muslim population. So please do stay tuned. I'm going to read first some scriptures because I think it's always good on a Christian TV program uh, to read scriptures. I'm gonna have a quick drink of water. And we're going to read from uh, Isaiah 5. But before I read these verses at the end of Isaiah 5, the context is um, this remarkable um, song of the vineyard uh, that uh, Isaiah lays out in, in this amazing prophecy to do with ancient Israel, but I believe very applicable to modern uh, Britain, which, by the way, um, our constitution is modelled on ancient Israel. Remarkable correlation between uh, the foundations of our uh, Christian uh, country uh, to ancient Israel's uh, laws and traditions and moral framework. But the context, before I uh, put up on the screen the verse I'm going to read at the end, is there are seven woes. God creates this wonderful vineyard, this wonderful land, almost a paradise. And then uh, there are some very, very sad um, uh, images which frankly reflect modern Britain. I won't read them in order, but one that absolutely hits out uh, at me today, given this post office scandal, is the woe in verse 23. Woe to those who acquit the guilty for a bribe, but deny justice to the innocent. We've had over 20 years of obfuscation, crushing of the innocent, like Alan Bates we saw on that uh, picture, and 900 postmasters and uh, sub postmasters and sub postmistresses who are crushed by the mighty uh, post office and by the way by government uh, ministers who just ignored the issue. And what were they doing? They were acquitting the guilty. All of these executives and chief executives who were earning millions just went uh, through scot free. Horizon, Fujitsu, and uh, the, the post office management uh, were basically in a, a racket. In fact, uh, Alan Bates called, called them today thugs, thugs in uh, suits. Um, uh, uh, verse 18, woe to those who draw sin along with cords of deceit and wickedness as with cart ropes. You know, we're living in a very unjust society that's thrown away the moorings of any uh, Christian moral uh, framework and it's left us wide open, wide open to um, others to come in and say, look, you're making such a mess of it. 
you so-called you know, Christian nation, so-called Christendom. And, and as, by the way, Anjum Chowdhury uh, said, if you remember just over 10 years ago, we had a debate here on Revelation TV with one of the great uh, high priest gurus of political Islam, Anjum Chowdhury, um, who was a rabble rouser sent to prison for his support of ISIS. Um, he was smiling confidently about how our nation would one day, and by the way, the whole of Western Christendom would one day be subjugated under Islam. He was boasting about it. Uh, um, and by the way, it's, it's not um, a right-wing uh, observation to say what David Cameron uh, said. Um, they're swarming over to our country. He said that as prime minister. He was wrapped over the knuckles. Or, or Gillian Duffy, if you remember, um, in that uh, infamous meeting with uh, Prime Minister Gordon Brown, where she said, look, where are they flocking from? You know, we're not talking about a, a, a trickle. We're talking about mass migration and uh, largely bringing in, uh, without any integration into our culture, uh, bringing in completely different legal frameworks and, and different worldviews, and some of it very oppressive. Now, I'm going to read what the response is at the end of Isaiah 5, because I think it is very telling. And I'll be honest, when I first read this uh, as, a, as a youngster, I thought, oh, well, this, this, um, these hordes, as it were, that were uh, coming into ancient Israel, well, that must be the return of the exiles. So I couldn't quite figure out this passage but after the seven woes, woe to those who call evil good and good evil. Uh, woe, woe to those who build house upon house out of their greed, so there's no space left. You know, and you, know, you could say woe, woe to those who leave um, people homeless on the streets uh, while, while you just shuffle uh, past them uh, and ig ignore their plights. And, you could um, add a number of other woes. But if we can read from Isaiah 5, uh, starting at verse 26, he will lift up. This is God in judgment on Israel, but I think it does relate to us. He will lift up a banner to the nations from afar and will whistle to them from the end of the earth. Surely they shall come with speed, swiftly. No one will be weary or stumble among them. No one will slumber or sleep nor will the belt of their loins be loosed, nor the strap of their sandals be broken. If we can just come out from that, and I'll read a couple more verses. Um, yeah, it looks like a, a very highly organized, a concerted a mass action, uh, which is uh, uh, invading uh, the land of ancient Israel. And they are highly organized, unlike uh, one uh, may say, uh, modern Britain, where we are so divided among ourselves. And as that great poem by uh, Thomas Babington Macaulay uh, uh, says, as we wax hot in faction, in battle we wax cold. And that, sadly, is an indictment of our, our modern politics. Um, uh, just read the news of today. I don't need to convince you that we are in complete confusion, uh, economically, politically, uh, morally, uh, what's been going on with the, this uh, 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 transgenderism, uh, where you can't uh, speak against it, and yet government funding, mass funding's going into uh, puberty blockers and destroying the lives of young, young confused, you know, dysphoric uh, children, uh, this um, uh, gender, Tavistock gender clinic. Um, and you're not allowed to say anything against it, otherwise you'll lose your, your job. It's a terribly, uh, a morally corrupt uh, country that's, that our secular progressive liberals have created and um, spurned the Christian heritage and opened the doors wide open to those who will replace not only uh, the Saturday people and not only the Sunday people, they'll, they'll replace, I can tell you, the National Secular Society uh, and, and the British Humanists. Uh, you're, you're all going to go out, by the way, in this uh, flood. I'm going to read the other, other two verses. There are more, but I'll read uh, from verse 28, Isaiah 5. Whose arrows, 
whose arrows are sharp and all their bows bent, their horses' hoofs will seem like flint and their wheels like a whirlwind. Their roaring will be like a lion. They will roar like young lions. Yes, they will roar and lay hold of the prey. They will carry it away safely and no one will deliver. It's a pretty shocking, almost apocalyptic prophecy, a typical of Isaiah. Now, I, I have to say, as someone who is very open to dialogue uh, with uh, the Muslims, I've, I've been to two events, one about 20 years ago after 9-11, um, with a group called Dialogue with Israel, uh, sorry, Dialogue with Islam, and it was uh, uh, down in the east end of London. Um, it was a completely fundamentalist audience, segregated, you know, with the those observant, bearded uh, men on one side, uh, the women covered on the other. And I was on the platform with Roger Mosey, who was at that time the head of BBC World News, the chair of Hizbut Uriya, who was advocating political um, Islam uh, and has now been prescribed as a terrorist, uh, you know, supporting organization, as has Hamas, by the way, we'll get on to that. And um, they treated me with dignity, but it was like a harbinger of of what was coming because the again like Anjum Chowdhury this chair of his Baturia was supremely confident that the West was decadent and and clueless and confused and lacking in direction and purpose and he was absolutely right so I've I've enjoyed debating and I, on another occasion with the same group uh, probably about uh, 12 years ago um, in the East End again and um, with a number of Muslim scholars. It wasn't a, um, a debate as such, but I do remember how they all went quiet when I quoted the words of the Lord Jesus. I said, as your prophet, uh, Jesus said, those who live by the sword will die by the sword. And, you know, history uh, shows uh, twice um, when you know, in the early growth of Islam, the, the hordes um, spread across uh, North Africa and into Spain, um, uh, uh, basically uh, by the sword, converting um, whole swathes of, of some uh, uh, Christian uh, populations right into Spain and were stopped uh, at the Battle of Tours, I think in 732. And then another occasion, you know, in, I think, the 16th century, at the Battle of Vienna, they reached the gates of Vienna, the Ottomans, and again, it was very, very violent and blood-curdling. But it seems now that, you know, that because we've got no sense of our own identity, you know, and in the name of multiculturalism, which it isn't, by the way, you know, we're welcoming in folks who, who absolutely do not follow um, the British rule of law um, or British values. And I, I, I would like to um, show you one other, um, not to, as it were, uh, be a fear monger, but just to show you what, what happened after that terrible massacre, because we need to be reminded on October the 7th, there was a horrific massacre of the Jewish people in, in Israel and across Western capitals, you had scenes like uh, the one I'm about to sh show you. This is, by the way, in Berlin. It was sent over by a family member. You imagine being in these houses and listening to what looks like a marauding mob coming down the streets. And it's a fine line, by the way, peaceful protest. And when you're inciting violence, uh, it's not far away from um, windows being smashed in. So I, I want to just show, show you this and then we'll go directly to what are the British Muslims uh, uh, saying today in response to opinion poll questions. So we're going to watch this first.
Okay, if we can still hear that in the background. I, I, I'm not making this up. When I first saw this and it came through uh, to, to my WhatsApp, I, I, thought, I actually thought it was CGI with the, um, the sound uh, being uh, dubbed over the top. But the reality is we're talking about hundreds of thousands approaching the millions in capitals across the Western world, basically putting down their stamp. Um, uh, you could say it's peaceful protest, but equally you could say it is, um, it is blood curdling, uh, uh, not to put too fine a point on it. Uh, and when you, what do you do in Western societies when you have such large populations who are basically saying death to the Jews? Because the chant free Palestine is well known, well known. You imagine actually holding this camera and, and seeing this outside your window. It, it happens during times of revolution. And again, that chant, if you're uh, Jewish, you know that that means um, have a Juden Rhein uh, Palestine. Okay, I think we've probably had enough of that, but um, I think you get the message. That, by the way, was in, in Berlin, but it was repeated in many other, many other capitals. I want to go now to this uh, survey, and please do, if you write in, and you might think, oh, Tim's not going to read out my emails. I do my absolute best uh, to uh, read out your emails and texts. Uh, just to repeat, this uh, uh, Muslim uh, Attitudes polling, and I've, I've called the program you know, British Muslim Attitudes because it, it's contrasting the Muslim Attitudes against uh, the general public's uh, attitude. And it was published by the Henry Jackson Society. I received it in an email today or yesterday. Uh, um, in partnership with uh, the law firm JL Partners. First question, uh, and I'll just pick out uh, little details. If we look at our first slide, please. Um, imagine your MP were to have a totally different stance to you regarding the Israel-Palestine conflict. Which of the following are acceptable or unacceptable in the circumstances? And basically, there are twin bar charts going down, um, comparing first what the general public would say, then British Muslims. So um, pretty equal when it says writing to your MP. But very dis stark, the second couplet, um, the general public would say f only 14% would say it's completely acceptable but t uh, of the general public. But 26% say of the Muslim uh, community it's acceptable. Um, when you think in the light of the stabbings of Stephen Timms or, or the murder of David Amos, you know, that's a shocking. Uh, and then you think of these, the nature of those protests, you know, it's, it's a, a, a chilling uh, thought. And of course, when they talk about removing an MP, again, very high proportions. Should we have a look at the, ne the next um, uh, slide? And that's by the, this next one is just drilling into the British Muslim uh, response. Uh, to that question uh, and seeing the breakdown across the board. And you, you can see male, female, you know, in the different age groups, non-graduates, graduates. graduates. Uh, I, I find it amazing how they've captured the young uh, uh, votes. Just look, 35% would uh, protest outside the home of, of an MP. Look at graduates. This is educated people. 42% would go outside, you know, the home where you could have young children in bed and they would go and protest outside the home of, of an MP. Next question, I'll try and rattle through them um, to leave enough time for some of your responses. Of the following options, what is the most important uh, to you at the next election? Rank your answers from one to five being the most important, and five being the least, one being the, lowest, the most. Um, so, and what we get here again, uh, may as well go right down to the bottom because it's got cost, cost of living um, issues at the top. 52% of the general public say it's most important. 40% uh, of British Muslims say it's most important. But if you go down to um, uh, the third uh, bar, uh, uh, immigration for the general public is <coughs> the third most important. <coughs> Excuse me. But for the Muslims, the, it's the Israel-Palestine conflict where you can see Overall, 
56% are saying that it's either most uh, of second most or third most importance. That's a very high proportion, and 26% saying it's the most important. Um, compare that to the general public, who's only 3% of whom say it is the most important. Sorry for the cough. <coughs> Now, again, if we drill down into um, this, actually, this simplifies it. It's just saying, look, of the, those who say it's the most important uh, in the British Muslims, it's the second most important, the Israel-Palestine conflicts. Um, I don't think I'm telling you anything that you, you don't know or you haven't learned through the media or through Rev TV, but, but this is what the British Muslims are saying. This is their opinions when they're uh, being asked questions in, in a bona fide uh, opinion poll. Next one is, is, is a little more chilling, to be quite honest, because it's talking about their conspiracy theories. Now, as we know, in the Arab world, there are widespread uh, conspiracy theories about uh, Jews controlling the world. Uh, but here we have now, please say, whether you think Jewish people have too much power. General public say 16%, British Muslims say 46%. I mean, it's, it's wicked if it, if it wasn't true uh, that there's such a high proportion. Uh, on the US foreign policy, they say 47% against 20% of the general public. Financial system, this is all part of the, the kind of Shylock uh, um, uh, stereotyping. Uh, that, that you have in The Merchant of Venice or Fagin in Charles Dickens. That again, 17% of the general public, by the way, which seems quite high anyway, 39% um, of British mus Muslims. Now, um, where you see the general public uh, going high on an issue, well, of course, they're influenced by the media. Um, uh, but interestingly, uh, the fourth uh, one down, 18% uh, of the general public say the UK media industry is controlled by the Jews. Uh, British Muslims are saying 41% of them are saying that they have too much power. You get the message, <coughs> even down to the pharmaceutical industry. So, you know, uh, the conspiracy theories of Mein Kampf and the protocols of the elders of Zion uh, seem to be alive and well in the British Muslim community of today. And again, if you drill down into the uh, different uh, the genders and the age groups, you can see that overall, um, for, let's take the top line, 47% of, of British Muslims um, say the Jewish people have too much power. Uh, and, and then uh, again, I would say it's, it's concerning when you see the age groups uh, across the board, frankly, but um, to see that the young have been taken in by these conspiracy theories. You know, anti-Semitism is rife in Britain today. And by the way, it's illegal in Germany to deny the Holocaust, and yet they've uh, absorbed, after Angela Merkel said, we can do this, wir schaffen das, and we can absorb a million a year. By the way, we've just heard that uh, the EU uh, are absorbing, uh, are they absorbing or they're imbibing a million a year uh, immigrants uh, um, and we're not far behind in Britain despite uh, Brexit. So the numbers are significant. Uh, again, uh, the, these conspiracy theories uh, are in the UK, if we go back to that last uh, chart, uh, are similar uh, to those who are born outside the UK. The UK born and those born outside the UK. And by the way, you know, those terrible bombings uh, in King's Cross, they were UK born, you know, radicalised uh, here in the UK. And of course, Jemima Begin, a UK, UK born. Uh, there's nothing to stop folks being radicalised when a whole community is believing conspiracy theories. And uh, we owe it to the Jewish community uh, especially um, we don't have a very good record going back uh, through the centuries, by the way. It's only Oliver Cromwell who uh, permitted the Jewish uh, people to um, return to Britain after they were shamefully uh, exiled under, I think it was Simon de Montfort uh, in the 12th century. So, you know, we've, we've had 400 years 
of freedom, but uh, it's a very slippery slope and it would be devastating, um, not only for the Jewish people, but for our country if we allow this to persist. I'm, I'm stating again what the, the Muslim uh, a population in this country believe, what they are, are saying. And in one sense, it's more chilling than, than seeing, you know, a million people marching with the Muslim Council of Britain or some other group down our streets. Uh, another very significant uh, poll finding on our next slide. Only one in four British Muslims believe Hamas. <laughs> this is absolutely shocking. Only one in four British Muslims believe Hamas committed murder and rape in Israel on October the 7th. How can that be? when we saw all the evidence, when we had the Israeli flag um, projected onto Downing Street, when all um, commentators acknowledged the atrocity of October the 7th, 80%, it is an absolute outrage, I'm sorry to raise my voice, 80%, eight, I cannot hardly believe I'm saying this, 80% are saying Israel is committing genocide on the Palestinians. Um, and when it comes to um, the issue, let me find it going down, 46% uh, of, of the general public. Well, that's an indictment on the BBC, if you don't mind me saying. Uh, but uh, a significant one uh, is, is there uh, in um, the uh, fourth, fourth one down, it says Hamas committed murder and rape on October the 7th. 62% um, of rational um, people in the general public say that it did happen. I would say even that's a bit scary. 30% say they don't know. I mean, the evidence was overwhelming and it's just pure prejudice that uh, means that there's not 100% of the general public. But 24%, only 24% uh, of British Muslims are saying that uh, Hamas committed murder and rape. There is an incredible um, bias that's inbuilt in, in the community. And of course, this is why the Labour Party have a little bit of a quandary, you know, with uh, Keir Starmer. He's recently put out a social media post saying there's a terrible, you know, a rise of Islamophobia in this country and it, it you know all hatred of of people uh, according to their religion or or race is is terrible and and needs to be um, called out but it does appear as though uh, Keir Starmer is rather exaggerating and, try, and trying to play to this uh, Muslim vote if we can go to the next slide um, I shall read your email shortly, so keep writing in, please. I mean, if I have silence from the Rev TV audience, I think I'll pack my bags. Um, for each of the following pairs of statements, choose which statement comes closest to your uh, view. Um, th again, this is the British Muslims analysing across all the age groups. It's a fairly even spread. It's only the oldest who, who are down to 13 uh, uh, percent. Um, but uh, they're, all, they're all pretty low, and it averages out, as I said, to uh, one in four. Uh, but um, it is significant, I think, that the older people who do, it's, it's a patriarchal society, male-dominated society, and um, they very much influence the younger generation. Look how, how many 18 to 34-year-olds, the fourth one down, 46% say Hamas did not commit murder and rape in Israel on October the 7th, despite all of the evidence. They, they have the highest number in, in that question. Um, dangerous, dangerous times. Uh, if we go to the next uh, slide, it's just uh, uh, giving a simplified view. General public uh, uh, say, uh, which do you have more sympathy with? 27% uh, of the general public say Israel. 16% have a sympathy with Hamas. Again, it is crazy. They are a prescribed terrorist organization. And the BBC continually parroting um, uh, that it's only according to government, certain governments in the West. 
is, is really inciting people to support Hamas and see the results on the second band there, where you have 3% uh, of British Muslims have a sympathy with Israel, 46% of our country, our country's Muslims, 46% have a sympathy with um, a terrorist organisation that butchers babies and rapes women and uh, took all of those hostages and massacred 1,200. It's absolutely unacceptable, absolutely shocking. Uh, the next one, of the following two entities, which do you feel more sympathy with? Again, this is a breakdown. Um, I don't need to go into that, but again, you can see, uh, no wonder it's blood red. They've got blood on their hands, uh, I'm afraid, uh, to be supporting um, uh, such a bloodthirsty terrorist organisation. And then uh, the final few, if I can quickly go through them. Do you have a positive or negative view of the following? Um, and you can see how uh, they view the uh, Palestinian Authority positive. Hizbut Uriya that I mentioned earlier is the uh, uh, political uh, Islam. Uh, interestingly, um, not, not striking support, very striking support for Hamas. So it looks as though if you're more murderous and more barbaric, you get more support from the British Muslims. 50% um, support jihad. Can that be true? No, sorry, I'm reading the negative now. So quite negative, 50% uh, of the general public, only 23% of, of, um, of the Muslim uh, population. Uh, and, and again, um, a much more negative view of, of ISIS, uh, probably because they didn't succeed in their, in their wicked plans. And by the way, to support ISIS during, during their invasion of the Levant and, and Syria and Iraq, uh, I was was imprisonable. That's why Andrew Chowdhury went to prison. And then uh, this uh, a breakdown, do you have a positive or a negative view? And it gives a breakdown of the different age groups. Sorry, I'm boggling you with a lot of statistics, but uh, otherwise someone could write in and say, you're making this up, Tim. But it's not my figures. You can see the source there of this poll. Uh, and then which side of the, the next slide, which side of the Israel-Palestine conflict do you think the following forms of media tend to be more biased towards, if any? And, you know, you could almost fall off your chair when you see how, you know, Jeremy Bowen and others, you know, accuse Israel when a, a Palestinian rocket hits a hospital and accuses Israel of a massacre and um, is continually um, uh, taking an anti-Israel bias but, you know, what more can they do to convince the British Muslims who say 52% uh, of British Muslims say the BBC is biased uh, towards Israel? Um, that just shows how politicised they are. And, and also they say 42% of social media, which is a complete bun fight, so it's very difficult to gauge anyway. But they believe that uh, because they believe other conspiracy theories about the Jews. And then, um, uh, which of the following statements comes closest to your view in explaining why Hamas attacked Israel on October the 7th? Um, and again, sanitizing Hamas's motives. We're talking about 1,200 people massacred uh, peacefully in their homes or at a peace festival because Hamas wanted to forward the Palestinian cause. That's 52% of British Muslims, a general public I don't know whether, whether I'm more surprised about the general public or, or the, the Muslim uh, view, but 26% say that um, they have a, a sympathy with Hamas of the general public. And then um, that's broken down. That, that We don't need to show that slide. It's a lot of detail again. And then, and then I thought, as I've been taking a few pops at the general public, I'll just show this um, uh, graph uh, what are you most concerned about, or how concerned, if at all, are you over the following forms of ex extremism? Far left um, uh, extremism, fairly concerned or very concerned, 27% of the general public. Far right extremism, a higher proportion, 34%. But Islamist extremism is 41% of the general public are concerned about it. Well, there we are.
thank you very much for bearing with me. I'm going to read some of your emails. If I can just um, minimize and go into your emails and your texts, I'll read them in order. And um, if, you, if you think I'm on the wrong track, please write in as well. Um, we're, not, we're not in North Korea here. Um, this is a, a pluralistic a country, and I'm going to give my two penneth, and I don't mind others giving theirs. Hi, Tim. Eddie comes in with the first um, email. Uh, according to the latest poll, polls, only 25% of all Muslims in Britain believe Hamas committed atrocities on October the 7th. You're right, and I'm pleased, Eddie, that uh, is confirmed by this survey. Point this out as dangerous, and you'll be labelled a racist or an Islamophobe. The UK is sleeping towards Armageddon. Thank you, Eddie. I appreciate that, and I agree with you 100%. Um, Paul says, uh, great to see you. I have an inclination that the immigration over water to our country, you said that, but you didn't enter the, the sentence, but you say, I see a Trojan horse. Who are the people coming in to the land of the UK? Well, it's because there is no, um, proper border control and it goes back to the Labour government as well as when they said that it is not fit for purpose and yet they still just completely opened uh, the gates. Um, David writes, uh, uh, well it says from Carl but the email address is David. Um, uh, good evening, it appears Muslims are not welcome in Belfast. One foreigner had to set up a shop in another area of the city. That's interesting. Um, uh, Glenda, there are, are lots of British Muslims that are not radical, but apparently Muslims are Muslims first, then British. Um, uh, those who are not radical do not speak out against radicalism. If we say anything about what's happening, we are called racist. The government has got to be brave enough to sort this out, and thank you for the programme. Uh, God bless from Brenda. Thank you very much, Brenda. Um, Les says, uh, but David encouraged himself in the Lord, 1 Samuel 30, verse 6. In these challenging times, as we await the soon return of Messiah Jesus, we can do the same. Romans 15 verse 4 says, For whatever was written in the past was written for our instruction, so that we may have hope through endurance and through the encouragement from the Scriptures. God's promises will stand and be fulfilled. God is faithful. And by the way, Les, you know, if we read Isaiah, you read Jeremiah and you read Ezekiel, you know, there are promises and warnings. And uh, Isaiah 5 that I read earlier is definitely in the category of warning and you need to read it carefully and see how it correlates you know to a, a nation that abandons its heritage abandons its vows and promises you think of the coronation oath how that's been breached in our lifetime by so-called ministers of the crown who've spurned their whole heritage and history of our, our nation and demonized, you know, great leaders of the past. It's no wonder that they can't, they've got nothing to fight for. Um, and they're not really sure what they're fighting against. Um, uh, Lee writes, Christians may be oppressed, but true Christians will never need deliverance. They may be demonized and yes, the spirit can come upon someone and they act in it, but they will never be possessed. Just because David says, do not take your spirit from me, uh, um, means that God will leave. He never, it doesn't mean, I think you mean to say, um, he promises to never leave. It's our mind that uh, can become warped or feel he is not near. God will never leave. He brought, bought us with a price. His covenant will not be broken. This is a false and misunderstood teaching. God knows he means well, but this is false. I don't know who you mean means well, but God certainly means well. Wonderful promises but as I say, also warnings. Um, consider therefore the kindness and sternness of God, Romans 11. Um, read it for yourself. It's a warning uh, for us. Uh, Jean says, it certainly beggars belief to me the chanting of death to the Jews in Berlin, Germany, uh, after the Holocaust of World War II. I know this is rampant all over the West, but nothing or no one is stopping it. There's no moral education to the younger generations, whereas now, there seems to be a reason and explanation that the more immoral or hate, hateful something is, then it's okay. Definitely we're in the latter days. Um, Hayden writes, 
Hi Tim, remember the most important thing, our God through Jesus is much more powerful than their a God with a small g. Like during the Second World War when the nation was called to pray, God changed the outcome of the war. So now let's call our, all our Christians to pray that this nation will not be taken over by Islam. I uh, believe in prayer and I think that if, if, you're, if you're sincerely, the, the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man will avail much. Uh, but is there, is there really heartfelt, heartfelt, effective, fervent prayer uh, that we have to examine ourselves, uh, all of us, and also be, beware that we don't get, um, as it were, hooked into, you know, lassoed into the enemy's uh, game of, of hating uh, people rather than uh, false teaching. What we should direct our uh, moral indignation towards is false teaching that does no one any good and it's not loving to encourage it, uh, to welcome it, uh, to absorb it, to uh, finance it, which is what we've been doing in our country. It's not uh, compassionate, it's not loving, uh, uh, it's actually uh, quite dishonest and, and those who have uh, promoted it um, will uh, the warnings are there for you. Ask not for whom the bell tolls. The bell tolls for you. Sorry for pointing twice at the camera. Um, and then uh, here we have uh, from Lee. Uh, the last days. Hello, Brother Tim. I pray that many lukewarm fellow Christians wake up quickly and pray to God for wisdom. James 1 verse 5. We are clearly in a war and in the last days the rapture is coming. We need to lead many to Christ while there's still time. It's time for the Book of Acts, the Acts Church, to arise across the UK. Islam, by the way, I totally agree. And in, in Acts 4, Peter and John were forbidden uh, to preach the gospel. They, they were told, you know, with, in no uncertain terms, you, we will release you as long as you don't talk any more about Jesus. And they said, well, we have to decide whether we obey man or God. And I think that this is a challenge for us as believers. And by the way, while we have these, you know, marauding gangs, I would call them, intimidating people, intimidating the police, um, the police seem to be emboldened uh, to take action against Christians who pray outside um, abortion clinics. And you think, well, really? I, I mean, are they threatening? Uh, you know, what, where is the you know, the weights of uh, the power of the state uh, is largely crushing the, the, those who they can crush. And, you know, I think I've got a picture somewhere showing um, folks just standing outside, um, um, exercising their democratic rights uh, to uh, uh, pray for the unborn, and uh, quoting there from Psalm 139, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. It's a very loving verse, a very caring verse for the most vulnerable in our society who are the unborn, and you can get arrested for that. But you can't get arrested, apparently, for calling uh, for the death and expulsion of all Jews from Israel. Uh, and, and here, uh, this is from Michael. Islam could be created by Satan because it seems... The only point of its existence is to destroy Christianity and bring in a world ruled by religious dogma rather than the way, the truth, and the life, uh, the beauty of Jesus. Uh, just a point there, Michael, that you, uh, you uh, in a Christian um, uh, channel, we know what we're talking about when we talk about spiritual forces, but uh, the social media world can take out just one little phrase out of context of a whole hour's program and they can uh, say you're uh, preaching hate or you're inciting uh, hatred but actually you know the biblical uh, position is quite forthright about false teaching and false doctrine and we can say it lovingly uh, and, and by the way you know we're denounced as infidels you know we we are uh, people of the book, and as long as we pay a jizzy tax, you know, and become uh, untermention, as it were, second-class citizens, then we can be tolerated within Islam. Uh, but 
Um, that's apparently quite fine to say that in the, you know, uh, under British values in the modern British society. But to say anything the other way round, which by the way isn't calling in any way for people to be killed or slain by the sword, um, we're not calling for a return to the Crusades, but even to talk about spiritual issues um, as taught in the Bible, you know, as a good friend of mine who's a, a, Q, a KC, was a QC, he said that unfortunately we're moving to territory where the gospel is going to be designated as hate speech. Um, so watch this space and pray for wisdom in everything you say and choose, choose your ground wisely. Alan and Mary, I'm not surprised at the results since it is predominantly a spiritual battle. By the way, I hadn't read your email uh, when I just said what I said, but it is exactly that. It's a spiritual battle and we are fast approaching the end times when evil is regarded as good and holiness is regarded as evil. We watched an interview with the author of Son of Hamas. He was the son of Hamas, wasn't he, Alan and Mary? His view is that there is no difference between Palestinians and Hamas. All want to destroy the Jewish nation. God bless you. Um, uh, Alan, I can't see your email. I think you're resending it, so sorry if I missed it earlier. It seems unfair to me that the incoming immigrants are given accommodation, hotels or vacant mili military housing, food and help, while hundreds of our own people are sleeping rough, e.g. in London, without a roof over their heads or state provision of food. Charity surely begins at home. Thanks for writing that, Keith. By the way, you know, many, there are many homeless who have fought for our country and for our freedoms, and they are veterans of the military, and they are shunted to one side by the government in the same way they shunted the sub-postmasters to one side, and it is absolutely shameful. Uh, because, again, there's no sense of community or family or, uh, the, or, or nationhood, and it's become a dirty word, and um, no wonder that they can say, well, they sharpened us, we can welcome in, you know, people from all over the world, uh, regardless of, you know, what their view is to uh, British nationhood, and, um, and we are reaping the whirlwind. We must not forget, this is by, from T.Y., those who bless Israel are blessed, so those who curse Israel are cursed. Uh, God bless Israel, and bless you for this program. Thank you. Um, uh, Les just says, prayer is the verbal release of a specific faith for a specific purpose, all based on a specific promise from God. Prayer is not conquering God's reluctance, but taking hold of God's willingness. Prayer will make a man cease from sin, or sin will entice a man to cease from prayer. He who fails to pray does not cheat God, he cheats himself. Les, very, very profound and poetic. Paul and Ruth write, do not be anxious about anything the Holy Spirit will speak for us in our time of need. Stand and be strong. Thank you very much. You're triggering different scriptures when you say that. Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and thanksgiving, present your requests to God and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Um, Norma, uh, thank you for your email. Uh, we should not be surprised at these figures. Leaders grovel to the Muslims. It's tragic. Everybody is asleep by choice. Uh, who is in leadership of our country? I've seen more programs recently and more publicity given to Ramadan on general news programs. I'm now a long something, one being uh, done on. I don't know what that means. Um, a TV chef who is a Muslim recently went to Saudi on the Hajj. Naturally, he has done, by the way, the women aren't allowed to go. Um, the women are covered up. Um, they don't talk in this progressive liberal, you know, uh, utopia about how they are oppressed and subjugated. Uh, maybe uh, not so much in our nation, but there's plenty of evidence of it. Uh, and um, it is, it is not. Um, it's, it's, it's not, it doesn't show, you know, the hu humanity of man to man or the brotherhood of man, as they call it. Naturally, um, he has done a whole recording of this and it's being broadcast by the BBC in the coming weeks. Maranatha, but let's wake up first. Keep on keeping on, Tim from Norma. 
Hello Tim, just asking, how do we stop contributing to this evil when our taxes are going to all this um, and it's not in our control? You need a lot of wisdom every day. I, I pray for wisdom in what even I'm, I'm reading out here and this program. We just need wisdom. And uh, we're citizens, as Paul was a Roman citizen, let's, let's call our government to account and you know, get involved without being party political. The, these issues transcend party politics and both of these uh, mainstream parties who bas basically are two sides of the same coin, they, they, they cheat us on so many levels and you can't believe their manifestos, I'm sorry to say. And democracy is supposed to be one of the four great British values, but um, ha ha is what I'd say to that. It's, it's become a, a, a joke and um, we are being um, exploited and our political system is being exploited. Um, Susan writes, the Muslim question makes no sense as to the reason for any nation allowing thousands of people to enter our country whose values, quite frankly, are putting our democracy at risk. Again, Susan, when I mentioned democracy, I haven't seen your email, but it is being put at risk. But civil unrest will undoubtedly arise as the indigenous population are bound to react eventually if Muslims continue to attack us. I'm not sure about that, actually, in the, in the British context. This would bring in martial law and loss of our freedoms, a perfect excuse for full government control and to go headlong towards the rise of the Antichrist. I believe Muslim immigration is a deliberate attempt to destabilize the West. Those figures are exactly what I expected. They are horrifying. There's a lot of truth in what you've written. Um, uh, and uh, I get a text uh, talking about um, a, a book uh, by David Pawson, which you can get from www.davidpawson.org forward slash books forward slash the challenge of Islam to Christians. And David phoned me. He's been a good friend before he went. He was promoted to glory. Uh, and he phoned me uh, when the Lord showed him th this vision uh, that uh, Britain would become an Islamic country many, many years ago, 20 plus years ago. We have a wonderful, cherished memory of our dear brother, David Pawson. We must not forget those who bless Israel and are blessed. Oh, I've already got that one, thanks T. Um, uh, this is from Sheila now. Monday in the middle of the night, I was awakened by this song and uh, with a shout, he would gather up his people. I was wide awake by this song going over and over again. Wonderful program, thanks Sheila for writing that. Um, and thanks, Tim, for the, the note on David Pawson again. Anita, it's lovely to see you. Unfortunately, there is so much anti-Israel, pro-Palestinian sentiment in the UK. There are so many people who don't really know what happened last October. A lot of Muslims hold strong views about acts of terror and some condone these acts. Sadly, it's the world we live in now. What we see on the news doesn't help. Most of us are aware that these are the end days, so all we can do is pray and keep the faith. We need to speak the truth, spread love, and stay close to our Saviour, for only Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Thank you, Anita. And by the way, if we just hold on to that verse, we are in a strong uh, position. And by the way, we will be ridiculed for that one verse in John 14, verse uh, 6. But if we compromise on that exclusive claim of the Lord Jesus, then we haven't really got much to offer. And we might as well leave it to, to the social liberals or to, to the Muslims to, to run the country. But if we really believe um, that no one comes to the Father except through the Lord Jesus, that he, he died on the cross for our sins, which by the way, the Muslims do not believe, they reject, they say that he swooned, he didn't die on the cross, so they take out the heart of the Christian message of atonement, and of course, the, the secular liberals say, oh, well, Jesus did exist, but, but he died um, on the cross. They'll accept that bit. They certainly won't accept that he rose again, even though secular historians say, well, the narrative is, is very plausible. Um, uh, many, many elements of the resurrection narrative, but they obviously can't accept uh, the resurrection itself. So we have these twin challenges uh, to Christianity and our nation, um, Islam, and secular liberalism, and in many ways they are arm in arm. Yes, now um, Carl writes again, the Orwell this Orwellian something, when the authorities want to gag the anti-abortionists, it, 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 is, it is Orwellian. 
um, as is, by the way, the Equality Act, where we have nine um, protected characteristics and all are equal, but as George Orwell said in, I think it was Animal Farm, but some are more equal than others. <laughs> And so we, you know, we know we're at a disadvantage and there's a higher hierarchy of equality and we are somewhere down you know, at the bottom of that hierarchy. Um, thank you for reading my email. Michael writes, I have read the Quran and the Muslims prefer Islam because it's such an easy religion to follow. It doesn't ask for suffering or bearing the cross or any type of true faith where you, um, where you work for the goodness of others and the goodness of the world. Thank you, by the way, for all of your emails. We're running down uh, to the, the top of the hour. Um, Judy writes, the results show us that Britain has entered a time of judgment. Our Queen's passing saw an end to God's hand protecting Britain. But we are called to pray and stand in the gap on behalf of our nation. Maybe God will hear our prayers. Well, I can say he certainly will hear our prayers and bring about a deliverance. Um, well, let's pray thy will be done. Um, we pray for a deliverance for our children's and grandchildren's sake. Great program, good to have the knowledge. Yeah, by the way, you can see these programs on a catch up, you know, a video on demand on the Revelation TV website. And then uh, finally, uh, the first one, by the way, that isn't, um, hasn't got a name to it, double standards. It isn't for the police to decide which religions or worldviews can be free from criticism. The nature of free and democratic society is that we can speak publicly about our beliefs. A Bristol pastor reached out to Avon and Somerset police after being a victim to racial abuse. And I can't finish that email, but thank you everyone who's written. God bless you. And as Nick Russell said, don't have nightmares. 